Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your professor at Johnson County Community College. And in this short screencast, we're going to talk about media queries and how you can use a media query to change the way your web page looks at different size devices. Probably the most simple media query is the print style sheet. In my web page here, I have two link tags in my head section. And the thing that is new and different is this media equals something attribute value. Now media equals screen is the default. So you typically do not see the media equals screen attribute value in your main style sheet for your screen because it's not needed. But I just put it in here to differentiate between the style sheet styles.css that's going to be used for the screen and the style sheet print.css that's going to be used for a printout. If you take this web page and you right click and print it, you'll see that it looks a lot different as you print it than it did on the screen. And that's because typically when you print a web page, you often do not want everything on that web page to print. And you typically want a white background with black text as opposed to the colors that you may have used on the screen. So let's look at that most basic media query where you're querying for what kind of media is going to display this web page and applying that style sheet print.css. So on the print.css style sheet, all I have is image, nav, and footer. I'm hiding those elements with this rule, display none. So you'll notice that the image and the entire nav section and the footer, when I right click and print, are completely gone. So if someone wanted to print this page, they wouldn't unnecessarily print the images or the nav that they don't need on their web page. I'm also changing the background color of the body to FFF white colored to 000 black and I'm using a common font family and font size that's going to make this printout easy to read. So that's a very basic small print style sheet but you'll want to deploy something like this in your final project. So that's the most simple way to do a media query is to query for the print media and apply a different style sheet file. There's a second type of media query that changes the styles when the web page is being displayed on the screen. And so you see as a wide screen, I've got this nice light blue background here, but when I get smaller to tablet size, I'm going to a light gray background. And then finally, when I get down to my tablet size, I'm going to a black background. And you deploy that through your main style sheet because after all, the media is screen for all three of these. Here's my style sheet that contains media queries for the screen. What you wanna do is put your global styles or the styles that apply to all sizes, regardless of how wide your viewport is at the top. And so I'm starting with my background color of DEF and that's this light blue color. And the color of my text is black. I'm making my outer wrapper 80% and my margins zero auto so that that content's centered. I'm making a flexible image here and then I have some class styles. Coming on down to this line starts my first media query. In the style sheet, the media query will start with at media and then you'll write your rules that determine if these styles will apply. So your media query starts with a big selector that sets up the rules and then the rules themselves are simple selector declaration rules like you've written before. So I really like to have this indented so that I can read where my media query starts and stops and then the rules within them are pretty easy to read. So what this rule is saying is when we're on the screen and the maximum width does not exceed 64 M's, apply these rules. And so all of the global rules will still be applied except for the body, background color, and color properties will override those of the global style sheet and the A, the hyperlink, text color will turn black. But don't apply those until the max width is under 64 M's. So that's what I've got right here. You can see my breakpoint right here of 64 M's with this background color of all 999. We know that if it's all the same red, green, blue, we're gonna get some shade of gray. So that's your 64 M breakpoint. Furthermore, I've got a second media query here that says for the screen only, and when the maximum width is 37.5 M's or less, change the body to background color again to all zeros and that's going to be black. And so when I get down to 37.5 M's, when that's the maximum width, then we're applying this background color, which overrides this background color, 
which overrides this background color. So you always want to make your media queries more restrictive as you go down your style sheet. By the way, the media queries have to be the last thing in the style sheet or they don't work correctly because we'll apply these styles and then the web page will read this media query when we hit this breakpoint of a maximum width of the screen of 64 M's will apply these. And then when the screen gets even smaller to 37.5 M's, and we know the M is the size of the capital letter M in that browser, we'll apply these styles. Let's write one more here so that outer wrapper width of 100% and save and refresh and see that margin go away when we get down to cell phone size. Because if we're really at this size of a screen, we want to use everything, the entire window available to us. Now these breakpoints of 64M and 37.5M are just the current standards right now. If you see that written in fixed pixels, please consider changing that to, to M's because the M is a proportional font and will scale better than pixel measurements. But you can have as many breakpoints as you want. It's really more dependent on the content and how the content looks good or looks bad in the screen as opposed to someone dictating to you these set breakpoints. However, if you're not sure what to use, these are somewhat standard measurements in the industry right now. In a mobile first style sheet, the media query is written just the opposite. Again, the global styles are put at the top of the style sheet, but with a mobile first approach, we're changing the styles for the screen when the min width exceeds 64 M's. We're adding styles to get to the tablet size and then adding yet more styles when we get to the desktop size with the min width criteria. So mobile first style sheets and media queries will use this min width criteria, but most traditional style sheets will have their global styles for the full screen at the top and then apply new styles as the max width gets smaller than 64 M's or gets smaller than 37.5 M's. And this is a really good time to share with you an excellent tool that's in most browsers now. I'm in Chrome here. If I right click and inspect the page, I get the inspection panel and there's a tool that allows you to toggle the screen to most of the most popular devices. So I can specifically now see how that web page is going to look in these various devices. Because after all, the M is the default size of the current browser. So you're not going to see your font sizes change when I resize the browser on my desktop because after all, I'm in the same browser. I'm just simulating a smaller viewport by resizing it to truly see what the web page is going to look like in a particular device browser, you really need to use a tool such as the inspector tool that's available on all the browsers, or there are some more advanced developer tools as well. But this is just a fantastic tool. We talked about these bottom panels and how they can help you find and debug code. Truly, we could make a whole three credit class just on the resources available in the developer tools on these web pages and this ability to change your device and see exactly how that web page is going to look on that device is just really fantastic and it was time I showed it to you. Thank you.